Why Birnbach Matters Let's start mentioning a phrase that Bill Birnbach used to say. Every brand has a unique asset that cannot be copied. Its own past. And in our past, we have a creative genius. Bill Birnbach is seated at the same level of bright personalities such as Albert Einstein, Alfred Hitchcock, John Lennon, Pablo Picasso, and the most creative minds in the world. Let's start with some history. When Birnbach started his agency in 1949, he probably did not set starting a creative revolution as a goal, but that would certainly be the result of his work. Contrary to the accepted thinking at the time, Birnbach believed, it's not just what you say that stirs people. Above all, it's the way you say it. You can say all the right things about a product and no one will pay attention. You have to say it in such a way that people are touched by it. It must appeal to their emotions. Birnbach asked the fundamental question that guided all his agency's work, and this should be the question that continues guiding us at DDB. Why should anyone be interested in your ad? People are not waiting for our next message, wherever it may appear. In fact, today, they may be running away from it, or they may be making instantaneous judgment on it, positive or negative, then passing on that opinion to others. What Birnbach believed is that we must give people a reason to pay attention to our message, a reason to become engaged and involved with it. And that reason for being, more often than not, is that somehow we've made an emotional connection with our customer. No matter how technology and media have changed and will continue to change, we must never forget we are creating conversations with people. Not statistics, not analytics, not numbers. People. Also remember that, inside his agency, Bill Birnbach was the first who put together a copywriter and an art director as a team. Up until then, it had not been done. Birnbach put together two people with different skills, backgrounds, and mindsets to spark conversation and spark ideas that would in turn spark the interest of other people. This was the daily challenge of Doyle Dane Birnbach's copywriters and art directors. Be fresh. Before Birnbach, the high priests of advertising believed in rules. They tried to turn advertising into a science. Birnbach changed the belief that advertising is a science, and instead of hammering away, he won people over with humanity and humor. Let's see an Alka-Seltzer example. Mamma mia, that's the some piece to cut spicy meatballs, Jack. Sorry. Take 28. Out, Tony, and action. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. Cut. What was the matter with that? The accent. Cut. 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 Meesy, meesy, ballsy, ballsy. Cut. Take 59. And action. Jack. Sometimes you eat more than you should. And when it's spicy besides, mama mia, do you need Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer can help unstuff you, relieve the acid indigestion, and help make you your old self again. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. Cut. Okay, let's break for lunch. That creativity with humanity was revolutionary at the time. Instead of lecturing, Birnbach engaged, involved, and included consumers. He gave the customer credit for their intellect and sense of humor. Let's see how in the following commercial. Dear clumsy bellboys, brutal cab drivers, careless doormen, ruthless porters, savage baggage masters, and all butterfingered luggage handlers all over the world. Have we got a suitcase for you? These types of fresh ideas that engaged, involved, interested, and included people broke all the accepted rules of advertising of the time and led to classic campaigns like Avis, We Try Harder, and the revolutionary Volkswagen Beetle campaign. 
Some people say that what was so revolutionary about the Volkswagen ad was the fact that Birnbach gave a New York Jewish personality to a German car. That may be, but everyone agrees that the Beetle was given a disarmingly winning and lovable personality. Almost human, it was the personality of the scrappy underdog that loves to take on the establishment with wit and a sense of humor. Back in 1960, showing a car on a plain background was unheard of. But to refer to your new car as a lemon was an in-your-face act of daring on the part of the agency and an act of courage on the part of the client. A lemon, in the American vernacular, is a loser, a reject. Prior to DDB's Beetle campaign, car ads look more like this. There was always a dramatic shot of an over-designed car and there was always a girl. The proposition was the same as any other product aimed at the male buyer. Buy the car, get the girl. But Birnbach said, rules are what the artist breaks. The memorable never emerged from a formula. Let's see the following ad. This is probably the most famous ad from the Beatle campaign. It may be the most famous ad ever. It flew in the face of the bigger is better mentality that was prevalent at the time in America. Several books have been written about this campaign, but the single most remarkable thing about it was that, in pretending to be an anti-status choice, it gave status to inconspicuous consumption. Driving a Beetle allowed you to show off the fact that you didn't need to show off.